everyone! So, recently I started watching this uh, feminist YouTuber, Liana K, and uh, she's pretty funny. I know, you watching a YouTube feminist? Has the world gone crazy? No, no, she's just rational. Uh, I don't agree with everything she says, but she's not an outrage warrior, which is what she calls the social justice warriors. I kind of like that, because I feel like SJW is, is it's a derogatory term, right? And, <clears throat> but there's, there's so many different facets of, like, SJW that I don't feel like it's a, it's a great term for everybody. Like, can you really describe, you know, a national socialist or, or um, uh, it's not even the right word I was thinking of, but a, um, white identitarian or someone like Richard Spencer or something like, can you call them an SJW? Um, I don't know. Some people do. And, but I like the word outrage warrior better because it, to me, that talks to their behavior more than, you know, labeling them. But, <laughs> um, anyway, one of the things she was talking about was transgenderism and all that bullshit and <clears throat> one of the things that I disagree with was is this terminology of assigned gender uh, no no your parents don't assign you gender your doctors don't assign you gender they look at your genitalia your phenotypical presentation of your sex chromosomes and then go male female they tell you what the sex is, and then the gender is assumed. Not assigned, assumed. And, and this is what I think people have a really big issue when, when these, these outrage warriors or the SJWs or whatever the fuck they want to call themselves or, you know, whatever. It, they go with such hostile language. It makes people really, like, turn away from it and, and you know, like... I don't have a problem with a transgender person who's really transgendered going using the term assumed gender or something like that. Because assumed is like, oh yeah, my, my parents just kind of assumed I was a girl, but really I felt like a boy. There's no malicious intent on the part of the parents in general. Like, the parents are generally like, I just had a little boy, yay, I get to play ball with them, and then we're blue. Parents are really, really excited about their babies and moms. I don't know if you know this, but mothers of children, they love to go shopping. <gasps> and oh my god, grandmothers. I had just a family friend of ours who had a little boy, and... Before they found out what the sex of the baby was going to be, the grandmother, she did shopping. Just not, not like actually buying things, but she had, you know, her shopping carts on, on whatever, Amazon or whatever, you know, site she was using to go shopping on. She had her carts filled up with both genders, you know, and, and she was just waiting. She was just waiting in anticipation to find out, you know, what, what the, the, the sex of the baby is because... For 99% of us, gender and sex match up. It, it's, it's okay to be cisnormative. It's okay to be heteronormative. It's, it's okay. It's not a bad thing. Because most of us are. And I'm sorry <laughs> to the outrage warriors who, who insist upon getting angry at normalcy. Normalcy. Um... Being normal is not malicious. It's just normal. I'm, I'm sorry. You do not fall in normal. This is why you want to have your own special categories and stuff. This is why you want to force people to call you by other names and, and, and use hostile language, like assigned gender, as if it's something malicious that your parents are doing to you, rather than something they just kind of innocently assumed, like the vast majority of parents do. Generally, when parents have a child, they act like the gender of their sex. 99% of the time. 
Most parents don't have to think about this transgenderism. Most parents don't have to think about, oh, is my kid queer? Most parents don't have to think about, oh, is my daughter going to go off and start banging, you know, females and stuff? Some parents, they're like, I don't care if <laughs> my little girl's having make-out section sessions with the neighborhood girl because she can't get pregnant. <laughs> like, like that, that's more along the lines. I think, you know, fathers probably get a little bit more freaked out with, you know, their boys doing gay stuff because there is a masculine culture and masculinity is not bad. I like masculinity a lot. Masculinity is not toxic. And that's the other thing. It's like you, you, you want to call everything normal by these hostile names. Toxic masculinity. Like, no, no. It's just masculinity. Some people are toxic. Most men aren't. Most men sit there. They want to drink their beer. They want to have the barbecue in the backyard. They want to play ball with their son. They want to go to work, make a buck, not have to deal with, you know, little outrage, special snowflakes out there going, well, you didn't call me by the my proper pronoun. I'm going to report you to the boss and get you fired. Because you've pissed me off and you hurt me emotionally and you're a transphobe. You assumed my gender. And so what? So fucking what? If you go, hey, you know, you've assumed my gender, I understand. I look like a female. Could you please use they, them as my pronouns, though. Most people will look at you like, okay, you're fucking crazy, but you're polite, so I'll do it. Men don't like to associate with fruity guys. They just don't. My dad came from the Midwest, and he has a real hard time with the whole concept of gay men, still. You gotta remember, he came... It, well, not remember, but you have to understand... He came from an evangelical background. My grandma is a biblical literalist. My dad was trying to have a discussion with her about the other day about the Big Bang, which is, you know, the current scientific um, sort of theory. I don't know. They, they're talking about the Big Crunch. Now there's like, are we in a hologram? Is our is our universe holographic? And 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 are we real? And all this other bullshit that eh, it doesn't matter. The, the, still, the mainstream thing is the Big Bang theory, right? And my dad's trying to explain this to her, and my my grandma keeps going, "No, no, God made the world in seven days, six days actually. He rested on the seventh. Um, God made the world in seven days. Blah 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 blah. blah. And it's exactly how it happened in the Bible. And my dad goes, "Well, okay." We understand that God created the world. That's what the Bible tells us, okay? That's great. But how did he do it? How? And, and my dad's like, he could have used the Big Bang. He, he could have. You know, you're talking to an extremely religious woman here. And, and she cannot grasp the concept that, ooh, maybe God works through nature. And, and we can study nature and find out how it works. And that's okay. And it's okay to understand the mind of God. Um, I think it's actually one of our duties to understand the mind of God. And you understand the mind of God through, through doing experiments and, and scientific research and, and trying to come up with theories. How did we get here? Um, the exploration is a good thing. People from evangelical, very, you know, hell and brimfire type backgrounds, they don't have the same openness of mind. And my dad came from that. If you're gay, you're going to hell. It's a sin. That, that's probably what he learned repeatedly. And you gotta, my grandma was not a nice person. So any deviation from the biblical, no, no, not, not, not even. I remember one time <clears throat> I had been watching like documentaries on like Dante's Inferno and like Paradise Lost and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, these are guys who were angry at like the Catholic Church who wrote these, these, uh, 
treatises and stuff and like you learn about them and some of the imagery that they use is like the very pit of hell is cold it is cold and the devil is sitting there in a frozen lake <clears throat> and he's got three heads and he's blue and he's he's devouring just chewing on the souls of the damned and that's the deepest lowest level of hell and the reason why it's cold is because it is so 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 far away from the light of god and the warmth and the love of god it is the coldest place in the spiritual realm you know the furthest from the light of God. It is so far from the light of God that there is no warmth, no love, no nothing. Nothing good at all. And that's where the worst of the worst go. And so I brought up this concept to my, my grandmother. She goes, no, no, no. It's just, it's, it's, it's fire and brimstone. No, 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 no. Just to immediately dismiss it. You cannot talk to her about anything that might be slightly outside of what the biblical texts actually say. And and after that point, I was like, okay, I'm not. <laughs> yes, Grandma, I believe in Jesus. Yes, Grandma, I'm saved. <clears throat> and so, you know, coming from that background which a lot of people in my parents' generation did come from that background. And like, you know, especially in the Midwest, now with the internet, my generation and the generations beneath me are very, very anti like organized religion. Like I was talking to a guy the other day about it and, and, and not the other day, but a few weeks ago when I was still doing Uber and we were talking about how, you know, we don't like organized religion, neither of us. We're about the same age. Really good looking guy, too. Really wish I'd gotten his number or something, but whatever. But, uh, you know, and he, he made that comment that he, he kind of thought that, you know, it's kind of a generational thing. Our generation doesn't really like organized religion. You don't see a lot of, uh, you know, young people in church. And if you do, they're like, kind of out there but they're they're there generally of their own free will and they're usually not very fanatical either that or, or you know some people go for for the church environment for the the community you know and some young people do do that but you it depends on the church too if you go to more like more you know evangelical church the, the people you're gonna meet there the young people you're gonna meet there are, are gonna be you know fucking crazy they're going to be really, really into the religion. You don't go to an evangelical church um, that's all, you know, like a mega church, hell, hell and brimstone type thing. Unless you're really into it in our generation. Kids from my generation go to churches like there was this one called Calvary Chapel. And I've been to other ones and, and some of them are fucking weird. Like, I went to one <clears throat> here in Oregon and... It was like the weirdest fucking shit that I've been to other than the church that my grandma goes to, which is like this mega church. It is literally a mega church. It's the Assembly of God out in Iowa. And uh, it's this fucking mega church. And the guy, the pastor looks like one of those sleazeball, you know, TV evangelists. Ugh. So fucking gross. Um, but the church, the Calvary Chapel that I went to up in Olympia was very cool the 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 pastor who who uh formed the church pastor chuck oh my god he's a really good pastor he's he's very like he's very not you know fire and brimstone there was other pastors there who were like this one pastor todd who get out up in front or tad or something todd or tad or i can't remember what his name was but he'd get up in front of the congregation and he'd be like your sins are or your your good deeds are as dirty rags to god and blah 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 and 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 i would re leave I, I remember listening to a sermon by him and I was like crying when I left. I was, it was an upsetting situation. And, uh, you know, whenever he was preaching, my dad and I would look at each other and we'd be like, okay, well, we're going to go now. 
But Pastor Chuck, he'd get up and, and, and he'd start giving a sermon about the Bible and you would learn something and he would he would actually teach you about the text or, or something like that. And from my opinion, the good Christian pastors go into the text and they explain the historical context and they explain why uh, this belief developed and, and maybe some of the background and they, they the really good ones actually know maybe some Aramaic and maybe have studied like some of the original texts or, or know some, some Hebrew or something like that or at least have studied it and studied some of the language. And now, I, I'm not saying he went that far into it, but he was really good at, at preaching a message where you went, okay, I can go out and, and, and put this to my own life instead of leaving going, I'm such a piece of shit! And then when he left, um, he put in, I think his name is Pastor John, um, but I can't remember. And <clears throat> Pastor John was very much like Pastor Chuck in that he would get up in front of stage and he would, um, you know, teach you. It wasn't forceful, it wasn't cruel, it wasn't mean, it wasn't hell and brimstone. It was, it was some sort of message to teach you how to live, right? And... <clears throat> So the people that I met there, the teenagers and, and the, the young adults that I met there were really, really fucking cool people. And it was Olympia, Washington. And and back when I was a kid, before all the racism and shit hit the fan at Evergreen, Olympia was a really fucking chill place. Like, you know, the kids around would smoke pot constantly, you know, and the police, you know, you can Oh, smoking pot, right? Yeah. We would have, every day on 420, the groups of people would gather downtown and smoke pot, and the, the police would just kind of patrol. <laughs> like, like, that was the thing. Like, Olympia was pretty chill. And, and we were pretty... It's not, it's not the least diverse area in the world. It's not the most diverse area of the world. But I had plenty of Asian friends. There were plenty of black people who went to my school. They tend to click themselves together in groups. And so you'd see like the black girls all walking down down the the, the hallways, you know, with their high heels and, and their big earrings and stuff. And I'm not being racist or, or stereotypical. This is what I would see on a daily basis. It's this click of black girls all walking together down the hall and whatnot. <clears throat> So I'm just saying, it's not, like, the least diverse area. Like, I knew plenty of people of the other races, and, and so the, the whole environment was just a lot more chill. So that's my experience with religion, right, is this more chill version. My dad's experience is more, you're going to go to hell if you're, you're homosexual. You're going to go to hell, you're going to hell. His dad, his dad was in the Army, Army Air Corps. Okay, this is a tough motherfucker. Like my 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 grandfather, he worked at the mill. That that's that wreaks havoc on you. You have to be a tough motherfucker to work in the mill. And then he would come home, and he had a, like an auto body shop. And and back then, it, that was a lot of fucking hard work. You had to be a tough, strong motherfucker. A lot of masculinity went into that. And then my my dad had. What was it? Three or four brothers that, you know, all caused problems. His, his, uh, I think the oldest one, uh, <laughs> you know, would constantly be in, in trouble with my grandfather. And he, he was not my, my grandfather's actual son, but, you know, my grandmother's son and, you know, adopted family type thing. And, uh, you know, he come chasing, chasing my uncle out the door, and then the the the, uh, the neighbors would be yelling, "Run, run, so and so, run, run!" <laughs> and my grandfather would be chasing him. I'm gonna beat your ass, you know, type thing. Not not really. My grandfather, I don't think, was a very violent person, but um, 
you know, just a very masculine sort of situation he grew up in. And then he immediately left that masculine situation where the only females that he really had, you know, any sort of association with was his mother, who was not very nice, and his sister, who was bipolar, so she was crazy. Partly blame that on my grandmother. Associations with women was not very good. Then he went straight into the military. Uh, you know, as as a young man, and that's testosterone ridden. So you you bring all these different things together, and then you you bring him to an area like Olympia, and and he starts to meet gay men, right? And and my dad still goes on to rants about why have a butt stuff, blah, 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 blah. and and you still catch him doing it, and he's just so uncomfortable with it, even though he's had he's had friends. He goes he goes uh, there is a. a politician up in uh, Olympia that he knew who was on the city council, Jeff Kingsbury, who was a gay man. Um, and this guy was a great guy, you know, city council, he ran um, children, like a child theater troop type thing, downtown Olympia, you know, great community member, all that stuff, really good guy. And and from what I understood was not very focused on his, his gay identity, you know. And my dad would come home and he was still very uncomfortable with the whole concept of gay people, but he would be like, you know, uh, Jeff Kingsbury, he's my friend, but he's not my, he's not my boyfriend. <laughs> you know, he, he had to separate that out for himself. And so the vast majority of us, you know, we come from, you know, that sort of background. Our parents are either like that, very uncomfortable with, like, gay people because of the way they were raised or, or whatever. And, like, so they have this idea of what should be. And, and as my generation has grown up and, and stuff like that, we're more open to like different concepts and stuff. The whole concept of trans people for me, like I had a little bit of difficulty accepting it, but I'm 24, you know? Like if someone wants to go, I'm a girl and they look like a guy, I'd be like, okay, <laughs> that you do you. <laughs> and I don't say anything about it, I don't care. But other people do. Other people look at these older people who, who can't quite get it because it's so uncomfortable for them because they were raised in, in more conservative households or, or religious backgrounds or whatever and so forth, and they act hostile as if what they're doing, their opinions and their beliefs and the way they were raised is somehow evil and, and transphobic and, and all these nasty bigoted words and shit, and that the children of those people who are more conservative like me transphobes and, and, and bigots and racists and, 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 and all this crap. It's like, no! No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just arguing for, for, for normalcy being okay! And I don't think we need to use hostile language like, you assigned my gender at birth! As if it's malicious! It's not malicious! It's, it's people coming from different backgrounds going, okay, well, I guess I have a little girl here. I'm going to go buy her some pink flowery shit. There's nothing wrong with assuming your baby's gender. Because 99% of the time, you're probably going to be right. The other 1% of the time, I think kids born trans nowadays... They have a lot more, you know, support than in the past. And this has been an ongoing thing. I remember when I was young, being in school and, and, and um, watching videos about how um, some trans boy was murdered because he was trans and he wanted to come to school in a dress and some of the bullies at school, like, beat the shit out of him and ended up killing him or something. I remember, I remember stories like that. Can you imagine that happening today? I can't. Because what would happen is that there would be so much fucking outrage and it would be used over and over again. People will just look at trans people and go, it's not fucking worth it. It's not fucking worth it. People care too much about them. It's not fucking worth it. I'm not going to fucking do it. Like, when was the last time a trans person was actually killed? 
I don't know. And, and here's the thing. I think I would have heard about it by now because the outrage warriors would have been talking about it incessantly. But when was the last time it really, really happened? You can go out and say whatever crazy shit you want to say, and odds are it's not going to get you the shit beaten out of you. Unless, of course, you, you are you know conservative or you misgender someone or something like that. There's so much hostility. There's so much hostility, and it does, doesn't take into account the cultural influences that people face. And part of the problem is, you know, isolation and echo chambers and stuff like that. And and this revolving, you know, uh, victim mentality that keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. I was talking to this one guy <clears throat> on Whisper. Stupid fucking app. But, um, I like to troll people on there because it's completely anonymous. And uh, this guy had posted something about self-harm is weak, blah, 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 and all this stuff, and you just have to fight through it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, and my response was, I, I messaged him privately. I'm like, look, some people can't get out of it on their own. Some people have to have help. You know, if you are in misery, misery, you know, and he talked about just just sitting there with the pain and, 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 and pushing through it and surviving. I'm like... That is such a dumb idea. And, and and then he went into victim mode. And he went, you know, my friend was killed and blah, blah, blah. And I've got scars all over my body and blah, blah, blah. <coughs> he got very upset. So I started, you know, poking at him, trying to piss him off and shit. And I was just like, you're an angry person. And his best response was to throw, to, to say everything that I had said about him back at me. Even though I had a valid point. Like, look, there's some of us out here there who just need some help. And we're not supposed to have to do it all alone. This is why we build friendships. This is why we build relationships. This is why we get married. This is why we have family. And we, I try so hard to be nice to my sister because I want to have a good relationship with her because I've watched my mom's side of the family disintegrate because of her brothers being jackasses. Now we still have one brother that we talk to, but the other two, one disowned the family completely and the other one <clears throat> is a psychopath and we don't talk to him anymore. And, uh, I don't want that. What I want is to have my sister when I'm 60 year, old, 60 year old and be able to call her and be like, oh my fucking God, do you know what little Johnny did today? Assuming little Johnny's like my, my grandchild or something. You know, some bullshit. I want to be able to call, to her, call her and talk to her and then she'd be like, oh, that's so terrible. You know what? Though Kennedy just got pregnant again. Her child. I love my niece so much. And that's the other thing. It's like, and then, you know, this, this whole thing is like, I think people right now, they get so isolated from each other. And that's one of the reasons they get hostile is because in our society, for whatever reason, we're being told that the family's bad. There's like this push against family, against people having babies, against, you know, things. And I think that's cruel. I think when you have a single child, it's cruel. If you're going to have children, which you probably should, you need to have at least two or three. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, you're going to have kids. Well, you want to make sure you have siblings for that child because that, that's going to be their best friend even when they hate each other and they haven't talked for a year. And, and mind you, me and my sister did not have a great relationship when I was young. She left when I was 13. I saw her periodically throughout my life, you know, from the ages of 13 to 18. But we didn't talk. We didn't text each other. We didn't have a relationship. When she moved back in, it was like cats and dogs fighting. And uh, eventually things normalized and we started building a relationship and then she moved away again and she came back and and 
you know, when she came back, I tried really, really, really hard to develop a relationship with her. And, and <clears throat> I realized when she got pregnant that I want to see my niece. You know, I want to see the children in her life because they're my family and I want to build those relationships. I want to have that support. I want to be the support for those children. I don't know, when you become so hostile against your parents that you're like, I fucking hate my parents because they assigned my gender at birth. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Your parents love you. They were just trying to, they were excited about who, you know, having their, their little baby. Uh, and it's normal for parent to, for mothers to like want to go shopping and grandmothers to want to go shopping for their little baby boy or girl. What? Don't be so hostile against, like, your parents and your family because they assigned your your gender. That's so hostile. No, they assumed your gender based off of your, your genitalia. I'm sorry. Biology is real. I'm a biology realist. It, here's the thing. You cannot get away from your biology. You just cannot. You're a female. You cannot get away from that. It doesn't matter if you transition into being, you know, a man. It does not matter. You're still female, genetically, biologically. There's nothing you can do about that. You can change your hormones. You can change the, your typical appearance. And you can change the way people perceive you so that they call you man instead of woman. But you still can't change your biology. Your biology remains the same regardless of what you do to yourself. You can change your phenotypical appearance through hormones, which a lot of people do. And that's perfectly, you know, valid, I guess, if you're over the age of 18, even though it makes me uncomfortable. I don't like artificial hormones in general. And it really bothers me to have to take birth control. But, um, see, that's one of my own things. It's just like... I think people should just live naturally. So I don't like, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with the artificial hormones and all that crap. But that's a personal thing. I'm not trying to attack anybody. But here's the thing: if I share like that opinion with the wrong person, I'm gonna get called transphobe. I'm not afraid of trans people. Why would I be? I'm not afraid they're gonna come after me. I am. I'm. Not, I am kind of scared of like the crazy outraged liberals though. Like. They're regressive. Like, you know, you hear stories of, like, Trump supporters going to bars in, in New York and getting the shit beat out of them and having glass bo bottles broke on top of their head. And, and uh, you know, like, one of the reasons I really did not want to be an Uber driver anymore was because I was fucking terrified that I would run across the wrong liberal and they would try to beat the shit out of me or something for being a conservative if I said the wrong things. Like, do you know how uncomfortable it is to have to give a ride to a, uh, you know, a rainbow-haired freak who wants to sit there and tell you about how great Obamacare is? Meanwhile, you're sitting there stewing because you come from a well-off family and you have to pay over $3,600 a year in health insurance when you use it maybe a few times a year? You know how fucking frustrating that is? And, and to say to her, you know, you know, my family voted for Trump for economic reasons, and for her to completely just blow you up, it's so uncomfortable. I just wanted to say, bitch, you are a rude motherfucker. Get the fuck out of my car. Like, I clearly did not want to talk to you about this. But they don't, they don't listen. They don't care. They don't care about you. They have no empathy. They have no sense of reading the room. They have no sense of, oh, maybe I shouldn't talk to this person about this specifically. Because they don't seem particularly interested. This asshole, she was like telling me to go to USA.gov and uh, go get myself government health insurance. I don't want government health insurance. What I want is for Obamacare to be repealed so that maybe my health 
Insurance prices will go down. I'm not one to, to suck money off the fucking government teat. I want to make my own money. I want to be responsible for myself. I'm not trying to be a hostile here, but it's, it's, it's incredibly uncomfortable to be the person who goes, I want to take care of myself. I'm a woman. I can be independent. I can be strong. I can be, um, you know, myself. And, and do all these things and stuff like that and have my opinion and my voice and then have these out be terrified I'm, I'm scared to go into Portland and run into the wrong person so if I think I went down with like my, my jackass ex-boyfriend not that he goes into Portland with me but if I were you know I'd fucking wear a MAGA hat I'd be like yeah bitches cuz cuz he's six foot two or you know, six foot three or four I think he's six foot three and a half or something like that. He's a big fucking guy. He was a football player in high school and shit. No. Yeah. He's a big dude. And he lifts. He he can lift me up and I weigh I used to weigh over two hundred pounds and uh he lifts on a regular basis and he works and he works out and shit and like he's a big dude. Nobody would fucking mess with me then. But see, me as a small little girl, and I view myself as a tiny female woman, I'm very feminine, I'm terrified. I, I don't want to go down there. I don't want to go down there as a conservative, you know, and, and share my opinion. I'm terrified because I'm afraid I'm going to get the shit beat out of me, even though I'm a woman. You know, in this day and age, it's like, people just do not give no fucks. They'll stab you if you use the wrong pronoun or something. You know, it's, 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 it's insane. They view you voting for Trump as, like, some form of violence against them, so now they have the right to kill you or beat the shit out of you or break glass bottles over your head or steal your shit or, or be rude to you and, and try to educate you and, and call you basically stupid because you're uninformed. It's like, bitch, I'm so informed, you don't even know. You're the one who voted for the fucking woman who, who committed treason. I know. I'm getting off in a ramble, and if you're listening this long, I don't know why the fuck you are. Honestly. Like, seriously, you could have watched, like, the first, like, five minutes of this and been like, okay, I'm done. I understand the point of this. Um, don't be hostile. Let's, let's change your language a little bit. Um, and that's my, my whole point is, don't be hostile toward these people who just don't understand. What you're going to do is just piss them off and think, what the fuck, you fucking snowflakes. Like, like yeah, I'm, I'm gonna fucking start hating you because you're a jackass. You're a fucking jackass. You do nothing, nothing for your movements when you use aggressive language like, they assigned my gender at birth. No! No, they did not. They assumed your gender. And assuming is a perceptual thing. It's like when people get angry about somebody assuming your gender when they're an adult. I'm sorry, look more like a female if you want me to call you she. It's not natural to go, what gender is that person? And quite frankly, if someone asked, walked up to me and be like, What's your gender? I'd be like, what do you think my gender is? And if they didn't want to answer because they were afraid, I'd be like, you're a fucking moron. I'm a woman, you dipshit. Like, assume my gender, please. I want people to assume my gender because it makes my life easier. When somebody walks up to me and, and goes, hello, miss. I go, yes, that's right. I am a woman. Thank you for acknowledging the fact that I am female. I like it. I like being called by female pronouns. I'm cool with people assuming my gender. And for 99% of us, 97% of us, whatever the amount is, it's it's in the 90s. We we prefer being a, our gender to assume. It's just the outrage warriors who get so hostile and, and mean about it. You're, you're like fucking up your own movements. Like, we want trans rights! Okay, great. We'll respect trans people. You're transphobic. <laughs> 
and they come up with this these these words that mean nothing transphobia means nothing and come up with these fucking stupid words that are just meant to be diversive and 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 enraging and they're hurting their their whole thing they're like if if you go okay well i i can start trying to call you know trans people by you know the their preferred pronoun or whatever i can i can try to be respectful and all this crap and then you move the goalpost and you're like now you have to accept 72 different variations of gender out there and you have to remember all the pronouns and you have to you have to be able to um you have to ask people what their pronouns and you can't assume gender and it, ugh, this crap. we just go okay go fuck yourself you don't want trans rights obviously obviously you just you just want to be whiny little bitches that's that's what we view you as that's all there is. You gotta go take a shower. <laughs>